If we haven't had the chance to meet yet, my name is uh, Ben Hoyer. I'm the COO for Rally, and um, and I'm really excited that you're here. Um, in, we know that uh, it maybe wasn't easy for you to get here. You had to take some time. You had to plan for it. You had to find the parking space. You had to walk through the rain, maybe. Um, but we're glad that you made the effort, and we think it's going to be worth your time, whether you're uh, with us um, virtually or in the room. Um, let me just give you a little bit of orientation about where you are uh, and who we are. Rally is a network of people. It's a network of entrepreneurs, coaches, but also investors, local government, uh, companies, all committed to the notion that there are a real, significant, meaningful problems in the world. And those problems are worth solving. That it's worth doing more than, than a passing notice or mention or nod to the problems. They're worth all of us rallying together and putting our best effort, resources, and people to address real problems in the world. Rally is committed to say problems are worth solving and it will take all of us. And so uh, what you're seeing here is just a piece of what Rally is and who Rally is. Um, there's a little QR code. It just takes you to rallysea.com where you can learn more about who Rally is. Um, but I just want you to know that you're at the beginning of, for me, what is the coolest network in Central Florida. Uh, it is innovative problem solvers. It is generous and redemptive, like smart thinking philanthropists. It is passionate companies. It's the coolest net network in Central Florida working to solve real problems. And it's pulling together people from all different sectors. Um, and, and today, this evening, whether you're with us online or in person, you're going to see just quick shots, introductions. We call them first dates with each of our fellows from the last four months. We're very proud of the work that they're doing. And we know that the world will be different because they have been doing that work. Before we get into that, though, we want uh, to introduce uh, our host here. So we're on Rollins College campus. Thank you, Rollins. And we get to be hosted by Deborah Crown, who is the dean of the Crummer uh, Graduate School of Business. So Deborah, if you'd come up and just share a few words with us. Thanks for hosting us here today. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate it. So Thank you for being here, and I, I second that you braved the rain to get in, which is fabulous, in order to be able to participate in this Rally 3 showcase. So we're thrilled that Rollins and Crummer have been a board level partner with Rally since 2017, and this is a relationship that we absolutely value. Um, that Unfortunately, during COVID, we weren't able to host you on campus. So like everyone else, kind of had to hunker down. So this makes tonight even more special. And so I do want to do just like a couple of shout outs to Rally, who has actually accelerated 50 enterprises, including the eight that you'll hear from tonight, who tackle such you know, important, I'm going to second what Ben talked about, just such important environmental issues like human trafficking, quality education, empowerment of Latina businesswomen, st sustainable cities, poverty alleviation, environmental stability, mental health, and gender equity. And so when we're looking at the size and scope, oftentimes when you're thinking of accelerators, you're thinking of accelerators just in the Central Florida community, and that is not Rally. So when we look at Rally, absolutely they are right here in Orlando, but they're also throughout the US, the Middle East, Latin America, and Africa. Um, kudos to all of our, our Rally partners for doing that. I also have to give a little bit of a shout out to the Rollins and Crummer alumni and staff who have participated in the Rally Social Enterprise Accelerator, including one of my favorite people, Serge Albino, with uh, Echo Spears, Nicole Hall-Elser, and Kinsley Gurks of Batter Ease, and then 
absolutely can't forget Kyle White from Yopon Brothers, who we are privileged to say that he is our assistant director for our Center for Advanced Entrepreneurship. And so this connection between Rally and our Center for Advanced Entrepreneurship in general is absolutely fabulous, in particular with our social venture plan competition, really, I think, helps to uplift um, the entire community. And we're also amazingly grateful to our rally board members, our rally makers, the rally fellows for the role that you play in helping us deliver our mission at Crummer and Rollins, coming as guest speakers, working alongside some of the partner programs. So thank you. I hope everyone enjoys tonight's showcase. And now I have the pleasure of introducing Rob Panapento, who is the board chair as well as the co-founder of Rally. Rob? Thank you, so I was actually joking with some folks before, sort of how the world's evolving. Uh, first of all, it's just wonderful to see all you guys in a room again, so I'm very happy to do that. We tried to do a hybrid event, though. You see Kyle's already shaking his head. It was two cohorts ago, and it was just a disaster, right? Because no one really knew how to do those things, but we were just hell-bent on, can we just try to get some people in a room? And Nicole's sitting out there, if you remember, she was online just basically trolling us about what a terrible job we were doing online. So hopefully those of you folks who are participating virtually, it's a lot, it's a lot smoother. I think we've sort of learned our lessons. And unfortunately, I think we've, maybe fortunately, we've all learned our lessons and how to do these things in both live and virtual environments, which for Rally actually is going to be increasingly important because as Deborah said, we, have, we are now a global program, right? We started, as Ben said, to solve problems in our backyard and then found ourselves trying to help entrepreneurs all over the world while still focused on our, on our backyard. Um, and I, I really want to thank some folks here because we're about to come up on uh, some pretty special milestones. So this is our ninth cohort, right? So our next cohort will be our 10th cohort and will also overlap with our fifth anniversary of starting Rally. And for all of us who've been involved from the very beginning, I, I think that's an important milestone for us. I'm not so sure we started this. We thought we'd still be doing this five years from now. So that's a good thing. We've, we've expanded our network. We've moved internationally. As Ben said, I think we've created this amazing network of social entrepreneurs across our community. We launched a social venture fund that has made six investments in social impact, social impact companies, um, companies that sometimes have a hard time finding seed capital. Um, we've been able to provide that. But none of this would, would be possible without all of the supporters, our supporters, and that's the main reason I'm, I'm here today. First, I'd, I want to thank our founding uh, partners, all of whom are still actively involved in, uh, in Rally on a day-to-day -day basis. One certainly is Rollins College, and so we're very grateful for the support Rollins has given us from day one, the educational backbone they've given us, the, the use of facilities when we were able to use facilities, the wonderful presence of, of Dr. Conway, uh, has been on been board from the very beginning and her passionate leadership with us. So Rollins has just been so critical to this. Uh, I also want to thank my friends and partners at the Central Florida Foundation. Um, Rally was sort of the, the merging of an entity that Ben started uh, called Rally Makers and some work that the foundation was doing with myself, a couple of my partners in the room, Robert Newland and, and John Karen called Entrepreneurs in Action. And the foundation has taken on the mantle of, of providing a lot of the back office support for Rally, which has been very critical in how we've been able to scale. Um, certainly, I want to thank the Entrepreneurs in Action group who've been involved from the very beginning. Ben and what he's done at Downtown, Downtown Credo, and Sean Seipler's not here tonight, but Clean the World, which is one of our most successful social enter enterprises in Orlando. And Sean's just been one of the, the great thought leaders in terms of our, in terms of our community in building, in building this. Um, obviously, uh, we've been fortunate enough to get a, a lot of financial support from what Ben calls our cool, the coolest network in Orlando, and a lot of those folks are in the room tonight. If you're a rally maker, would you please stand for a moment? St please stand for a moment. So, what's really interesting about the rally makers who are here tonight I'm pretty sure every one of them has been involved from the very beginning of the program. And it's a mix of individual uh, entrepreneurs 
corporate supporters like at the time at the time Tupperware, but Jennifer stayed with us. J.P. Morgan, who's been with us at the very beginning, and John Rivers at Far Rivers, who's just been an enthusiastic supporter of ours even before Rally, because you were one of Ben's first Rally makers. So, John, obviously, also a wonderful social entrepreneur our community. So, thank you for thank you for being here tonight, John. Um, and I also want to thank our two public funders. Um, I don't think there's anybody here from the city of Orlando or Orange County here tonight, but um, both of those partnerships have been increasingly, uh, been very important to us. The city of Orlando has actually been involved from the very beginning and is one of our founding partners. Um, you'll see this, the first picture of us launching. It was a big picture here at Rollins College with Mayor Dyer. But one of the innovating things the city has done in the last year is, many of you may have seen that Mayor Dyer and his staff have put together a, a future ready uh, initiative about how do you make Orlando a sustainable, livable community for the next years? Some of that's environmental, but a lot of it is, is a lot of quality of life issues. And they recognize the power of entrepreneurism in helping solve those problems. So our relationship with the city now includes opportunities for our rally cohorts to actually compete and, and win pilot contracts with And the city doesn't even really care. They don't have to be local companies. The city's attitude is if an entrepreneur from, from Asia has a great idea that can help the citizens of Orlando, we want, to, we want to bring them here. And so the city has been a wonderful partner. And Orange County came on board last year and has also been very critical because we've had to walk this balance between solving problems in our backyard and solving problems across the world. And Orange County support has allowed us to make sure we have the resources we need to support not just companies from, from, from across the world, but really make sure we're focusing on issues that are that are need to be addressed in Orange in Orange County. So I'm thankful for their for their support. So um, it's taken a lot of people to get to this point. Um, from here, you now get to the best part of the evening, which is hearing from our from our entrepreneurs. So with that, I'll introduce the man that runs it day to day and works with these folks, my friend Kyle Steele. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> All right, um, everybody hear me? Cool. Well, I'm Kyle Steele. Um, I'm the program director here at uh, Rally. Um, tonight we're here. Um, I know there's some folks online, to, uh, actually a lot of folks online. Um, thank you for showing up. But we're here to celebrate eight um, awesome um, fellows and, and their team. Um, as program director, um, I was thinking about this movie called Polar Express that my son really enjoys. And there's a character named Tom Hanks who's constantly watching the clock and trying to get the train uh, to the place it needs to go. And uh, I feel like that oftentimes, right? Like I feel like at, at the end of the day, I'm trying to get these fellows, give them a world-class experience, um, pour everything I can into them, and get them to the uh, end of the, of the prize, right? Unfortunately, Santa's not here at the end of this prize, but maybe there's some other things at the end that they'll enjoy. But, um, but, that's a, but that's a daunting task, and I give it all I can give, right? And so the joke is that I don't smile at I'm mean. And that's not the reality. I'm just serious, you know? And so once I get them through the line, I'll be able to uh, at least smile and, uh, and breathe for a second. Um, but, you know, they're, they're awesome entrepreneurs. Um, our whole goal is to help them take their very early stage ideas and help them transform them into sustainable ventures that create um, measurable and positive social change. And so that's what we're all about. Um, to do that job, it's just not me. I have a team around me that helps me. Obviously, Ben Hoyer, Rob, all the, 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 the board and the rally makers. But then even more importantly, um, I have individuals like Erica, who is our program manager. She's in the back. Hey, Erica. Um, we, have <laughs> we have Hannah, uh, who's somewhere around here. She's dressed really nicely. Hey, Hannah. Um, and um, so I have this team around me that helps us uh, support and keep this train moving down the direction so that we can continue living into what we um, have always dreamed about, and that's becoming a world-class inter um, international social entrepreneur accelerator. Um, with that being said, uh, fellows, we're here. We're all good. Uh, you guys look great. I'm smiling. Don't you like that? Uh, I'm, I'll be so happy when this is over with. Uh, but it's been a pleasure. Um, so coming up first, uh, which is one of my favorite, well, all of them are my favorite, but this one, this one is unique, um, especially with our elevator scene, which you'll see. Um, but coming up next is, you ready? Francis Rios from Mujer Next. Thank you for showing up. Hello, I'm Frances Rios and I'm the founder of Mujer Next. Please follow me. We believe that companies can help Latinas ignite their trillion dollar impact on the economy, but how? 
by elevating them from the basement to the C-suite. We are aligned with the number five SDG when it comes to empowering women in Latinas, in particular Spanish speaking dominant, because they are basically earning half of what men are earning. They are abandoning the workforce and creating new businesses in record numbers while only getting less than 0.4% of venture capital in the nation. Our customers are mostly CEOs and HR leaders who, because of the great resignation, are having a really tough time Time attracting and retaining talent. As a matter of fact, in Central Florida, only 0.4% of Latinas occupy the C-suites. Also, when it comes to the Latina consumer, they know that they need to connect with them. But the opportunity that they are facing is that they are not being able to connect with them through billboards, newspapers, TV, even less at the golf course. So where can they connect with them? inside Muher Next. Muher Next is a virtual community for Latinas who want to connect, collaborate, and grow in Spanish and through content that is culturally relevant. And now you too can connect, collaborate, and grow with them. Our revenue model consists of three lines, one focused on companies, the other one on Latinas, and a third one that connects both sides through a credit card. When it comes to the market size, right now uh, we are thinking about 87 thousand women or Latinas who are located in Puerto Rico and Central Florida. And we are talking about that right now we have more than 1,350 Latinas who we are serving alongside with these partners who recognize the power that they have. Um, besides the wonderful mentors that we have from Raleigh, we are working closely with two former bank presidents and two um, CPAs who belong to two global and one of the largest CPA firms around the world. Um, what's next for us is to create four partnerships, one with a marketing expert to reach a 25,000 members, an international bank to create the white label card, a tech team to create our own platform and venture capital to really move forward. And what's next for you and me? Very simple. Please jump with me in the elevator so that together we can move Latinas from the basement to the C-suite. Francis, come on down and join me. Of course. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a mic so you can talk. So, you've got a lot moving here. What's the world gonna look like in five years with you and this company in place? Having women at the C-suite, having Latina women in the C-suite, I committed a mistake. What I meant was that only 0.4, less than 0.4% of seats at the C-suites in Central Florida are occupied by Latinas. Um, so what I want is to help them make more money, but on the same token, since their impact in the economy is so huge, um, for them to increase their, their income or revenue while increasing their impact on the taxes and the communities where they live at. You're going to get there. We appreciate it. Yeah, like this Friday, we are going to get um, 3,000 women who have already uh, registered for a program that we have. It's called Latina Next. It's the Congreso Next. It's a summit. It's a virtual summit. And more of, as of today, more than 3,000 Latinas are going to take advantage of it for free. So We're all going to be keeping our eyes on you. Thank and you congratulations. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Converting people every day. Good job.
I'm Cheryl Brown, Meriwether Vice President and Executive Director of iCare Workforce Solutions. iCare believes people live and perform best when they're not plagued by addiction, so we create training and certification programs that help companies move employees beyond addictive behavior and cultivate a workplace culture of health. Since the onset of COVID, excessive consumption of both legal and illegal substances has created what has been called a pandemic within the pandemic. Our venture aligns with Goal 3, Target 3.5 of the UN SDG. We help employees like Donna, a single parent working remotely. Donna lost a loved one to COVID and her family is struggling financially. She's overwhelmed and uses alcohol and pain medication to cope. Employers currently do very little to proactively address substance misuse and addiction in the workplace and struggling employees like Donna encounter many barriers while trying to access help. As few as 3% utilize EAP services, which are not set up to support prevention or non-clinical recovery services. Our desire is that employers will create awareness and safety in the workplace around substance misuse, addiction, and recovery. Doing so will create and sustain healthy, safe, productive, and profitable workplaces. Our solution is an addiction awareness train, the trainer and certification program. We offer two online versions, one specifically designed for human resource practitioners. Workforce development agencies play a vital role in communities. They curate, train, and develop local talent to meet local business needs. This cultivates growth and prosperity for the entire community. The stress of the pandemic has accelerated substance misuse and addiction among the workforce and traditional systems of care are reactive and insufficient, so employers are looking to workforce boards to provide creative solutions. I Care Workforce Solutions equips the workforce boards to help solve the chronic worker shortage. Substance misuse and addiction are pervasive barriers to hiring, retention, productivity, and profitability. This solution offers a win for workforce boards, for employers, and their employees. Our current pricing reflects market-based pricing. Workforce agencies can choose to enroll students in one of two programs, either individually or as part of a designated class. Our current capacity limits us to the state of Florida, but we have identified national and global opportunities for growth. For example, there are more than 500 workforce boards nationally, plus 90 individuals from across North America have sought us out and completed our training. We secured a contract to train 60 individuals that is valued at more than $100,000 and have begun discussions with the second board within our state. Our team is composed of accomplished industry professionals and subject matter experts who are supported by highly competent, mission-focused consultants, vendors, and strategic partners. iCare has staffing and technical limitations that reduce the scope of our social impact. Therefore, we are seeking program investments to build our organizational and technical capacity. Please come and join us and help us save lives. Hi. So you're, you seem very calm tonight. I've been practicing. You've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> help, us, help us understand, what was your biggest aha moment during your time at Rally at, at the Accelerator? Other than the fact that Kyle is not so mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's been wonderful to learn that there's so much support in this community. We're an Orlando-based school. We were founded here 26 years ago, and we've trained individuals in 40 nations around the world, more than 40,000 folks around the world in clinical substance use and addiction. But we haven't done much recently in Central Florida. So Rally has given us the opportunity to get connected again with our local community and make a difference here at home. And that has been just a wonderful aha to realize that we're not alone. There's so many people here like you who are willing to support us. So I want to thank every one of the rally fellows, rally makers, mentors, everyone, and my fellow rally folks. They have been wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity. Excellent. Congratulations. My name is Joseph Russo, and I am the founder of Emergency Ventures based here in West Palm Beach, Florida, where we believe technology can save lives in disasters. And that's what we do, we build tech to connect and serve citizens, volunteers, and emergency managers. Our social mission 
is to build resilience in communities. And we do this through equity, sustainability, and travel, making sure people can get in and out of affected areas meaningfully. Our UN sustainability development goal is 11.5 sustainable cities and communities, focused specifically on reducing the number of deaths and decreasing direct economic losses. Our beneficiaries are people and property, 330 million in the US, 20.94 trillion in GDP. And the current state is pretty rough, 688 deaths last year. $145 billion in damage just in 2021 from natural disasters. Our desired state is a 25% reduction in indirect fatalities, so once after the storm passes, in disasters, and a 10% reduction in time to insurance reimbursement to make sure that this infrastructure and these properties can get back to where they need to go. And that brings us to emergency ventures, where we are saving lives through technology. Our customers are emergency managers. We would sell to government, BDG, and then later look at insurance providers. Uh, after we build uh, for uh, GovTech, go to B2B InsureTech, and there are plenty of customers, as you can see there. Our problem simply is emergency tech is a disaster for citizens. It's too generic, it's scattered, it's inaccurate. We don't have the right tools for us, for the average everyday person, to be able to understand and weather a disaster that's going to affect us. So we provide emergency, an aggregated and personalized disaster data application on mobile and web that will allow anybody anywhere to understand what they're going to be faced with and help keep their friends, their family, and their colleagues safe. The business model is five cents per citizen annual recurring revenue with a lot of opportunity for future revenue streams. And the product market fit, there's a lot of big guys in the market for EM and public safety, but no one's really focused on this. No one's building for it. It's a great opportunity, not just for us as a company, but also to help people. It's a $26 billion market, and we have 150 years of experience on our team right now uh, with a few professors working on a National Science Foundation grant, and we're building out a really great advisory board. We have some four amazing folks on there right now. Our ask is $500,000 in a pre-seed safe. 85% of that will go to technology. And we're also looking for paid GovTech pilot programs to help us build this as well. Thank you very much for your time uh, and go rally. Thank you, Joe, great job. Tell us what is next for you. Well, uh, it is actually a very great week because this week we're going to be submitting our National Science Foundation grant with the University of Florida and Florida Atlantic University. And ironically, that is on uh, May the 4th. So the science guys in Washington, D.C. picked the Star Wars holiday to submit science grants. Very surprising. So that's the big thing there. And uh, we're working towards um, building out the prototype associated with that. And you know, from there, we're looking at building some more pilots, um, pilot programs around the state of Florida, and hopefully being able to put this into the hands of people who can really help. Excellent, Joe. We're looking forward to it, and thanks. Thank you very much, Mark. Hello everyone, my name is Yusuf Siraj. I'm with Hateshield and we are a social technology company based in Vancouver, Canada. Our vision is to address the increase in online hate so that we can reduce real world violence. The United Nations has identified these challenges under the UN SDG number 10. Our beneficiary at stage one of Hate Shield is university students. Uh, there's over 22 million in Canada and the United States, and they spend the vast majority of their time online where they do encounter a lot of hate, toxicity, and violence. 70% of students have experienced that in the last year, particularly around dehumanizing material. The current state that students are in is that their identifiable groups that they belong to, whether religious, racial, social, um, are being targeted. There are no industry standards currently, which means that there's limited follow-up options for students. Our desired state is to help reduce the incidents that are occurring and have positive, successful outcomes 
Hate Shield is really a tool for those universities or colleges that want to change this. We have developed an API that helps enable them to expedite the reporting and follow up with their students. It uses crowdsourcing technology to empower students to fly, capture, and report online or offline incidents, and then be connected with follow-up support. We've secured the University of British Columbia, uh, one of Canada's largest universities with over 60,000 students and staff as our first customer. And um, we have plans to additionally bring it out to different verticals, including banks, law enforcement, service companies, in essence, addressing a problem that they collectively all face, which is the harassment or dehumanization of their stakeholders, customers, or students. Uh, hey Shield is a plug and play API for websites and apps that answers this question of what do I do? We uh, give the student or beneficiary an option in order to help them report and receive follow-up from the organization that reporting to, and to create an environment where that they have a successful outcome each time they do so. We base this on an annual subscription pricing model. The uh, total addressable market only for the university vertical is over $16 million per year based on a subscription model. The uh, product market fit that we've experienced has been securing the University of British Columbia they, at $50,000 uh, per year on a subscription model. Uh, we've received promotional partnerships with the UBC, the Federal Government of Canada, the Province of British Columbia, and have a very strong comparable in light which uh, raised $15 million uh, to use AI to fight online toxicity and bullying. Our diverse and experienced HL team includes Tarek Taya, Masood Siddiqui, uh, Dr. Ishtiaq Ahmed, uh, Hafsa Zahid, and Sabrina Smai. Our asks from you today to connect with U.S. universities or organizations to increase our beta trials. We're also looking for funding to expand the development team of Haiti and also to connect with experts in the United States to expand our footprint and alliances as we build out. Next steps would be to get in touch with us and we can discuss hate management strategies, how Haiti Shield plays a part in that, and make our world a little bit better. Thank you so much. Thank you, Youssef. Tell us your motivation behind this. It's clear that you've come a long way with the thought process and that you're making big impact. Tell us your biggest motivation. Thank you uh, so much, Mark. And first, I'd like to thank uh, Rally and the awesome team, uh, you know, Ben, Kyle, and everyone uh, for bringing us all together for these important uh, events and to, to really learn from one another. Uh, to your question, which is it's so important, it's the why, um, what, what starts this. So in Quebec uh, City in 2017, a white supremacist gunman walked into a house of worship and killed six people. The uh, shock in Canada was so great. Uh, and we started to look into what, what happened? Why would someone do this? And it backtracked to online radicalization to violence. The spread of uh, disinformation and the weaponization of social media are things that are directly targeting and attacking our freedom of speech and freedom of expression. The solutions that we heard um, from stakeholders, including academics, government, uh, law enforcement, community leaders, faith leaders, um, and uh, uh, humane technology experts was that online hate is what drives so much of our discord and violence today. And it has to be addressed um, in a united way. It affects everyone um, from different, uh, from the left to the right, from up to down. And we all need to work together to find that solution. That is the motivator to prevent real world violence by addressing online hate. Thank you, Yusuf. We're looking forward. At Kalumi, we believe that through the better use of lighting systems, we can reduce the carbon footprint of commercial spaces, helping businesses and municipalities get to net zero by 2030. Hi, I'm Joey Genovesi, founder and head of innovation at Kalumi. I'm based out of Orlando, Florida and Barranquilla, Colombia. Kalumi has set out to design and create lights made in our factory that use recycled materials for their construction. They use less energy, last longer and have zero waste at the end of use. Our UN SDG is 9.4.1 and it measures CO2 per unit and our goal is to reduce CO2 per kilowatt hour dramatically. Our approach to lighting creates safer spaces, a massive reduction in CO2 and waste, keeping the air clean and the landfills empty. The current lighting installations have a whole lot of waste. LEDs are amazing at reducing energy consumption, but the way they're installed is inefficient. What we want is equal distribution of light. LEDs plus good photometric design increases energy savings significantly. 
So we're shining a light on lighting. We've developed a lighting system using proprietary, highly efficient hardware that reduces energy consumption by 32% over standard LEDs and increases luminance. And they last 10 years without bulb changes. Our customers are trailblazers in sustainable construction and municipalities that are looking to significantly reduce their carbon footprint. The problem is that over 10 years, an average commercial garage using a standard LED installation still produces 415,000 pounds of CO2 and are expensive to install and maintain. How we fix it is many, many smaller points of light consuming less energy, saving 60% of the CO2 output and they're 50% cheaper and they require zero maintenance over 10 years. And they're made of 100% recycled aluminum. Our pricing model is simple. It's a decade of savings with an ROI of just two years. And by focusing on 15 states and working with municipalities and apartment and office buildings, we feel we can serve a market of 29 million with early adopters. Our early prototype installations show great promise. Over four years, the data we gathered showed a massive savings in CO2, all while increasing average luminance. I wouldn't be here without the support of my amazing team, Caroline, my wife and head of operations, Marcelino, our head of engineering, our team in Colombia, and of course, our partners at Excelsia. We are looking to work with climate change fighting builders, architects, and municipalities to culminate with us and do paid pilot programs right here in Central Florida. Our goal is to illuminate 80,000 square feet in Q1 of 2023, keeping 90,000 tons of CO2 out of the atmosphere, equating to a million tons of CO2 over 10 years. Again, I'm Joey Genovesi. I want to thank Kyle, Ben, and my rally makers for this amazing opportunity, and I look forward to your questions. Joey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Help us share a recent celebration with you. What recent thing has happened that's a really big deal for you? So. I'm happy to say that we will be moving into our new facility June 1st, where we are going to be able to create four times more lights at a quarter of the energy usage. So it's a, our goal is net zero. We're, we're looking at different ways of reducing the energy even more. Right. Um, but the ability to create these lights in a space that uses less electricity in a way that is more sustainable is part of the whole bigger picture. So it's not just making lights that can save CO2, but the way that we make those lights is also gonna be very sustainable. Congratulations, Joey. We're looking forward to it. My name is Alex Todd. I'm the founder and CEO of Reliably Me, based in Toronto, Canada. I believe that blockchain technologies can help people prosper by empowering them with a behavioral character credential. We empower youth and young adults at risk of relapse to self-limiting behaviors by helping them gain equitable access to employment opportunities. We're focused on SDG number eight and ultimately want to contribute to reducing the number of youth and young adults who are unemployed and also increase the number of those who have in-demand job ready skills. People with a criminal history such as Lewis, also those with physical and intellectual disabilities or drug and alcohol addiction face the largest barriers to employment because employers look at them differently. For example, it is estimated that among the 5 million formerly incarcerated people in the United States, over 27% are unemployed because they have to prove their good character. Therefore, if given an opportunity to provide their good character over a period of three months, we expect that their rate of employability will improve 30% within six months. Let me show you how we do it with behavior credentialing. Our customers are workforce development organizations in the United States and Canada. However, our initial focus is youth and young adults with criminal records. Case managers seek to build strong client profiles that include background checks for work, for work history, identity, financial status, and criminal history in order to help overcome employer hesitancy and help them justify why they're taking a chance on hiring their candidates. Reliably Me allows Jane, who has a criminal record, to use her inexpensive mobile phone to show evidence of her good behavior. Her counselor, Bob, can assign repair of harm agreement related activities. As she completes them, she can demonstrate the reliability in a commitment portfolio that she shares with employers. 
and Bob tracks your progress throughout the program and beyond. We charge a month-to-month -month, month subscription fee based on $25 per user per month. There are 78,000 employment and youth development organizations in the United States. If each one maintained their subscription for a whole year at our highest price point, the TAN is $2.8 billion. The reliably neat commitment portfolio fills a gap left in historical background checks by adding evidence of current behaviors that matter to employers. We're a small dedicated team who has worked tirelessly on this venture for more than two years. I'm the founder with more than 30 years experience in information technology, while Partha has more than 15 years experience as a full stack software engineer. I will be most grateful if you could introduce me to forward looking people or organizations in workforce development with an innovation budget who would jump at the opportunity to experience the empowerment and agility of reliably me. Thank you, Alex. Give us an understanding of what you think the world will look like in five years with Reliably Me in place. Uh, hi, Mark. Thanks for the opportunity and thanks for the question. Uh, yeah, if we're successful, uh, it, it will not be uncommon for employers, recruiters uh, of entry level uh, positions to, re to request and give preference to candidates with a strong Reliably Me commitment portfolio. And those candidates will have a 30% higher success rate in getting employed. Thank you, Alex. We look forward to it. Now we're going to take a few minutes and look at what's happened before. We're going to bring some folks back so you can see where they are today and hear what they've been up to in the past. Kimber's here. We're going to let Kimber, let's. Let's start with you live. How's that sound? I think that would work. <laughs> all right. So first of all, uh, tell us about your, just a little bit about your company and what you've been through. We ultimately are in the business of making sure that older adults continue their mobility. It usually is scrutinized on the back end because there's no transportation. So we are a transportation provider. We also consist of three companies. We hire and clean our drivers, and we also provide service through Star Transportation Network, which is like Uber for seniors. And we have our retention and our contract winners, which is through Community Connections Transportations. Very exciting. And, and so as you look at your next steps, what does it look like? Well, it's very exciting. Actually, we are now going national once again. Before pandemic, we were in Atlanta, but we're headed to, uh, to Dallas, Texas with a wonderful co-op between ourselves and Toyota. And we also have an awesome opportunity here locally to um, provide service for our major player, which is Lynx themselves, as well as Volusia County. So we are growing leaps and bounds because seniors are going nowhere. But they are going somewhere yeah. with our help. <laughs> I'm glad you turned that around. Yes, Congratulations, Thank Kimber. You. We look forward to it. And Ken Peach from Karametics, I see you on the screen. Hello, Mark. How are you? And hello to hello. everyone there. Good, good. Let me just give a very quick background. Uh, Karametics is home paramedicine for complex care patients. It's been a program of the not-for-profit health council of East Central Florida, but uh, we're really excited because our win is in large part due to my participation in rally. Uh, we've continued our not-for-profit board support to grow Karametics uh, from 100% grant funding to a revenue producing program in 2019 and ultimately now getting ready to spin it off into a new B corporation. Uh, we've secured a president for Karametics who has vast value-based value, uh, value -based to managed care experience. So, uh, and he's prepared to, to take it to the next level. So our next milestones uh, meeting this month with an experienced investment banker who's willing to give us some advice and also possibly invest. Uh, we've got an attorney thanks to our rally maker recommendation for our B Corporation formation. Uh, we've also be meeting with a managed care CFO to evaluate the program from a managed care perspective. And our goal then will be to launch later this year um, and provide an ongoing cash stream back to the not-for-profit that helped fund and pilot the concept. 
Good evening, and thank you for being here tonight. I'm Carolyn Stewart, and I'm here on behalf of the Victory Cup Initiative's Corporate Patrons Program. I've been part of the Victory Cup Initiative now for several years, and I'm currently uh, the Board of Directors. The Victory Cup Initiative's mission is to inspire excellence in our community one story at a time. Our Corporate Patrons Program will help businesses stand out in a crowded marketplace by increasing employee engagement, maximizing the impact of philanthropic dollars, and turning corporations into powerful patrons while supporting the Victory Cup Initiative's alumni network and VCI itself. We believe the impact the Victory Cup has had on the Central Florida community is simply not enough. We know that we can do even more for our nonprofit alumni by forging closer relationships with local businesses. We know that we can help businesses build a culture around philanthropy through the corporate patrons programs engagement platforms that helps organizations align and direct philanthropic energy toward causes that elevate their community, workplace culture, and brand reputation. Our SDG is Goal 11, and we are an enabler organization. Our beneficiary are the 70 nonprofit organizations of all sizes, everyone from Eight Cents in a Jar to Second Harvest Food Bank, that have completed the Victory Cup Storyteller Training and Showcase. We add 10 new nonprofits every year. The current state is that our nonprofits work tirelessly and they lean on the Victory Cup network to be able to grow. The biggest impact we have in our nonprofits right now is just the year in which they qualify as a finalist and we know we can do even more. Our desired state is to increase the philanthropic giving and increase employee engagement. The social venture is the VCI Corporate Patrons Program will provide strategy, focus, and energy for businesses to increase employee engagement, maximize the impact of philanthropic dollars, and turn corporations into powerful patrons while supporting the Victory Cup Initiative's alumni network and VCI itself. Our customer is businesses, likely professional services firms, at, at least initially, with 50 or more employees located in Central Florida, have a charitable budget of at least $50,000, and don't have a full-time employee focused on this type of effort. The problem is that our client, the clients do not know how to navigate the Central Florida nonprofit ecosystem. The truth is, is they want their employees out of their offices, connecting in the community, and they just don't know how to do it. They also have trouble recruiting and retaining employees and their haphazard charitable donations. Our services that we would provide would be centered around strategy, focus, and energy to be able to solve those problems. Our revenue model is structured based on the type of service that they're interested in um, engaging us with. And our market size is about $71.5 million. Product market fit is that we know people want the service. They've already been asking us for it. And in the last few months through the rally program, we've already identified four potential clients. I'm Carolyn Stewart. I'm a board member and the Corporate Patrons Program Architect. Ashley Van is our executive director and founder. Aaron Zanotti is our project manager. We need your support to provide $56,000 so that we can hire a full-time project manager and to refer potential clients to us. Our contact information is on this card and we would be very grateful for your support. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carolyn. And Ashley Van is with us tonight, your partner live. Yes, Good to see you, you, Ashley. Thank you for having me. So what's the next big thing for your company? What do you expect to happen next? I think the next big thing for the Victory Cup Corporate Patron Program is just really getting the word out to the businesses in Central Florida about how they can increase employee retention through our program and really make their employees feel like they are true stakeholders in the direction and the success of the companies that they have. You know, for organizations to have a successful, efficient, high impact giving strategy, they have to feel comfortable understanding the nonprofit ecosystem. System. And so we are currently working with four organizations, but really just working to get the word about how they can do it, how they can increase um, their employee retention and make them feel great about where they work. Excellent. We're looking forward to your success. Hi, my name is Debbie Blatcher and I live in Orlando, Florida. I am the co-founder of Better Together Brands. We believe the American dream belongs to all of us. For people in the bottom 40% of income, 
We are a multi-unit franchise operator that provides opportunities to increase income and build wealth. 99% of the wealth in our country is held by half our people, leaving only 1% for the other half. Our mission is to close the gap through the power of business ownership. Our UN SDG is number 10, reduced inequalities. We seek to increase income of the bottom 40% at a rate higher than the average. Meet Cecilia. She is hardworking and wants to achieve wealth, but she is in the bottom 40% of income. There are 600,000 residents of Orange County, Florida like Cecilia. 18,000 of them hope to start a business, but they can't. Like Cecilia, they make less than 35,000 a year and have wealth less than $5,000. Their income is spent on basic needs. Their social elevator is broken. We work with people like Cecilia to create life-changing opportunities that lift them up into the top 25%. We created a program called Impact Franchising to bridge the wealth gap and restore faith in the American dream. The key to impact franchising is identifying the right partners to operate the business. They don't pay us money, but we consider operating partners to be both beneficiaries and customers. Business ownership is a path to wealth, yet only 4% of low-income Americans own a business compared to 35% of wealthy Americans. The main reasons are lack of capital, knowledge, and support. We solve this problem by providing startup capital, teaching business skills, and creating a wealth building plan. Hand in hand with our operating partners, we co-own a business that generates wealth through profits and growth. Hitting financial targets will double their income in year five and triple it by year 10. They earn 15% ownership along the way. The opportunity is significant. $10 million in Orange County alone. Our launch portfolio includes four concepts, closet organization, dryer vent cleaning, non-automotive window tinting, and artificial turf. The four concepts have a track record of success with 150 units open or in development. My co-founder and I have almost 75 years of combined experience in franchising. We have opened and operated franchise concepts and put thousands of people into business. Here's our ask. We need funds. We need a million dollars to launch 10 units in Orange County. We need introductions to foundations and impact investors. We need partnerships to help us recruit candidates. And we need customers for our first franchise concepts. Better Together Brands looks forward to working with you to close the wealth gap. Cecilia needs a hand up to opportunity and we are here to serve. We are better together. Debbie, what a fascinating and unique approach to doing something really amazing. Thank you. What's next for you? Well, that's a great question, Mark. And um, first of all, I want to thank Rally and yourself um, and the Rally makers and everyone who's helped us get to where we are today. It's been an awesome uh, four months and we've learned a lot. Um, we're very excited to say that this summer we're going to be launching our pilot right here in Orange County, Florida. Um, we will be self-funding the pilot operation, and we're currently in the process of recruiting candidates. Our web portal just opened today. It's live on our website, so thank you. Uh, if you know anyone who uh, fits the, the demographic profile of the candidates we're looking for, we would really appreciate if you let them know about us so we could take a look and get to know them for who they are, because at the end of the day, we know who makes a good business owner, and guess what, Mark? It's not the color of their skin. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. So as you can see, these businesses have come quickly to a point where they are ready for what's next. And as we close tonight, a couple of things I'd like to share with you to think about um, that, are, that, that are important for you and for us. First of all, uh, we have all of the people that you've seen tonight come together to make this be something important. It's also a time when applications for the open, uh, are open now for the next summer uh, rally space. And so if you haven't done it yet, now's a good time to do it on the 
on the uh, scene that you've got tonight, you've got a piece where you can go to a, a, a place to take a look, to go directly at the website to look at open applications. So we would invite you to do that. I would also invite you to think a little bit about applications for not just the next time, but for what's coming after that. Also, uh, fellow, uh, the uh, Rally uh, Fellows are also available to look at on the website, which is rallysea.org, uh, and you can take a look there. If you haven't done it yet, you should also take a look at Rally on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn for the latest updates on where they are. So if you'd like to see how they're doing, where they are next, come join us and take a look. And last, remember that this process is something that takes not just you and all that you're doing, but it brings together all of the people in this community who care a lot about what's next for Rally and we'd like to have you come and be a part of it. Thank you so much for being part of this tonight. We appreciate it.